Texas Congressman Dan Crenshaw laid into Republicans intent on killing the Senate's bipartisan border deal. Let's take a listen. The height of stupidity is having a strong opinion on something you know nothing about. I'm, I'm extremely disappointed in the very strange maneuvering by many on the right to, to, to torpedo uh, a potential border reform bill. If we have a bill that on net significantly decreases illegal immigration and we sabotage that, that is, that is inconsistent with what we told our voters we would do. People will make up whatever reasons they, they want to, there's a number of them I'm sure, but it would be a, a pretty unacceptable dereliction of, of your duty. Meanwhile, other Republicans made the case for sabotaging the legislation, specifically to hurt President Joe Biden. Why would we do anything right now to help her with that 33 percent? Do you believe if Joe Biden's approval rating was at 53 percent, we would even be talking about the border? We wouldn't be talking about the southern border. But he has to do something because he's hemorrhaging. He's bleeding. So what he's going to try to do is try to come up with some border security plan, bipartisan through the Senate, that is nothing but hogwash. But it would be a big mistake to uh, um, surrender, um, uh, abandon our allies and surrender to Putin in Ukraine like we did in Afghanistan. We could... What are you worried about? The fact that they're throwing cold water and rejecting it out of hand without yeah, even looking I, at I it? Think, I think we had to give them a chance to come up with a bill and look at it and then decide. Meanwhile, Fox's Bill Melguin reports more data showing a significant drop in illegal crossings in Texas's Del Rio sector, or Eagle Pass. The drop has been since Texas locked it down and Mexico increased their enforcement per CBP sources. There were 71,000 apprehensions in December, and that's compared to just 16,000 apprehensions in January, or a 76% decrease in one month. So Amber, how do you feel about that data on illegal crossings? Yeah, I think it's great news and it shows that what Texas is doing is working. Of course, there's going to be a court case coming up here in just a couple of days actually to determine whether or not Texas can continue deploying this razor wire. There's been a battle where the Supreme Court issued a stay on a lower court's decision saying that the feds can go in and remove that wire if they want to. Texas has basically said, we're just going to keep putting it up. If you want to come in and take it down, you can try. But our agents are here. We're going to continue doing this. And the feds have since backed off. The Biden uh, DHS has said that they're basically not going to get into a fight with Texas until this court case goes through, which I think is the right move. Um, at this point, you basically have a federal government that is uh, derelict in its duty to protect the United States. At the very least, if you want to call yourself a sovereign country, you have to have control over your own borders. Clearly, that hasn't been the case during the Biden administration. So I think Texas is doing the right thing in protecting itself in lieu of the government deploying its own resources to do so. You know, I feel like maybe Fox News and a lot of the conservative media conversation, you know, saying that we have open borders and that Biden's changed the border policy so much when really I don't think it's a significant amount. Certainly, it's not an open border policy. But maybe the Mexicans are watching Fox News. Maybe the people trying to cross the southern border have heard from the conservative pundits that there's actually an open border. And maybe now, you know, crossings are down because they realize that that wasn't true. So who knows what's going on there? But I think the Republicans, you know, Troy Nell's not the first time he said that, that uh, they're not going to pass any, you know, bipartisan border policy because they don't want to make Joe Biden look good. If it's a crisis, really, you would get something done. Obviously, you know, Representative Nels does not believe this is a crisis if he's not willing to compromise out of fear it might make the president look good. We used to be a country where people cared a little bit more about policy getting passed uh, than making the president look good or bad, wanting to keep his approval ratings down. Not a good reason to not address a crisis, in my opinion. I don't think this House Secure the Border Act is ever going to pass in the Senate. I think it's ridiculous that they think it will be. There's some things included in here that they want to detain anyone who has submitted an asylum application but has established a credible fear of persecution. What does that mean? Who gets to determine what a credible fear of persecution, if they're nervous talking to border security, does that then give them the ability to detain that person seeking asylum? There's just a few things in here that are so ridiculous that, of course, 
this will never pass through the Senate. There's also, you know, statements in here about having children uh, be detained at the border. There's just a lot of very extreme policies in here. And, and even language that's not up to date, calling migrant children alien child. It's just a lot, which leads me to my next question, Amber. I'm curious if you feel strongly about the immigration issue because they were called aliens for so long and you believe that they might be demons. <laughs> I guess that is a good question. Uh, let's break down the specifics in the Senate bill um, just so we can, for comparison's sake, look at it against H.R. 2, because although I disagree with Troy Nels that the reason for opposing it should not be because you don't want to give Biden a win, it should be because the bill is just bad. It doesn't actually do anything to secure the border. So this is a bill that was negotiated between the lead Republican negotiator, James Lankford, and then several Democrats, including Chuck Schumer. And what it does is illegal immigrants who are released from custody immediately get work permits, which increases a pool factor for why people are coming to the U.S. illegally in the first place. Um, for some reason, it helps reform the legal immigration system, which doesn't have anything to do with border security, because it increases the number of green cards the U.S. government can give out each year by 50,000. It also gives green cards to adult children of H-1B visa holders. Um, it does not change Biden's parole system. It uh, does increase the number of border agents, asylum officers, and detention beds, which only decreases, or excuse me, only increases border security if you're not going to catch and release the people who are being encountered at the southern border, which is what the Biden administration policy is. So basically, you're just increasing how quickly you can process someone before releasing them into the United States. And the worst part of the bill is that it creates this sort of arbitrary cap on how many people are allowed across the border on either a daily or weekly basis before Border Patrol has to start uh, doing expedited removal. The numbers are 5,000 a day across a seven-day period average, or 8,500 per day on any single day. This is equivalent to about 150,000 a month, or 2 million a year. This is above what were considered crisis levels during the Trump administration, when you might remember we had all of that coverage about the migrant caravans that were coming across Honduras and Guatemala to the southern border. The highest record month under the Trump administration was in May of 2019. Uh, in that month, we saw about 110,000 illegal encounters at the southern border. Now we're talking about codifying 150,000 a month under this Lankford Schumer bill. So there's plenty of reasons for Republicans to oppose this, and, and namely because it doesn't address border security. I would put that far ahead of these claims about not wanting to give Joe Biden a win. And then on the question of did Joe Biden create this crisis or did Fox News create this crisis by covering it, I think it was very clear from the fact that when Biden was running for office and in the months leading up to him actually taking office on January 20th of 2021, he was very clear about what he was going to do on immigration. He repeatedly called Trump's immigration policy inhumane, unjust, and some of the first actions he took as president were to loosen border restrictions and border security. He got rid of public charge rules that required uh, immigrants coming to the U.S. to have a sponsor that would um, help them find housing, help pay for them, and said that they weren't going to be allowed to get taxpayer benefits and taxpayer money. He also dropped the policy that would prosecute all illegal crossers. He issued a deportation moratorium. He uh, suspended the Remain in Mexico policy. He got rid of the Mexico agreement, where in exchange for more aid to Mexico, Mexico would agree to use its National Guard to help prevent crossings on their side of the border. And there's really a whole list of, I think it's 64 actions that you can look at that Biden took in really just the first few months that he was in office that did, in fact, make this effectively an open border policy. Now, if we're talking again about this Senate bill of $2 million a year, that's the population of some U.S. states that Lankford and Schumer are apparently OK with coming into the United States with very minimal screening. So I do have a problem with this Senate bill. I would not uh, fault any Republican for opposing it. In fact, I think if you are serious about border security and you think this is a crisis, then you have an obligation to oppose the Senate bill. I think we suffer from a lack of imagination around policymaking in this country. When I think about people crossing the southern border, I don't know if the solution is detaining them. That's a, a huge expense for American taxpayers, for public dollars that could be budgeted elsewhere. I do actually think that they should be given a work permit if they're released in the United States 
what would we rather have them work in the U.S. illegally? That doesn't sound right to me. So good on Schumer for including that. But I think they could go a bit further because if we're allowing this amount of people into the United States, we've got to have some kind of macroeconomic economic policy to match the amount of people coming in because we're increasing our labor force tremendously. And so what we could do, and Wall Street unfortunately would agree with me on this, is we could then lower interest rates tremendously, increase the creation of new businesses and investment in businesses. So then we have more people employed in the United States. We don't have a shortage of resources. We don't have a shortage of land or materials. We could employ those workers, build up infrastructure, high-speed trains, fix the potholes across America. And and put the immigrants coming to the country to work. What we need freed up is capital to pay them and mobilize those resources so that we can be productive as the economy. Let's run the economy fully, completely hot. And by the way, it doesn't need to be done through lowering interest rates so banks are loaning more and more people are taking out those loans. We could instead have direct public investment in these infrastructure programs. Then we would have more people going to work. We'd have less people unemployed. We would have more things to enjoy in the country and better roads to drive on. But uh, unfortunately, we suffer for, from a severe, I think, lack of imagination on how to handle you know, the immigration crisis. We're not seeing a lot of ideas in this direction for how this could really improve our country from either sides of the aisle. So I think you know, that part's missing from the Senate bill and certainly from the House bill as well. Yeah, I would just close by saying that I think uh, if history is any guide and the reality of the situation right now, it's that we don't have the resources to help take care of this massive influx, certainly not in the short term. We've seen situations where children have been asked to go to school remotely, where people have been kicked out of community centers and shelters in favor of housing people who have come into the country illegally and are not American citizens. And unfortunately, we're doing this at the expense of people who do pay taxpayer dollars, people who do live here and who are American citizens, who certainly deserve resources primarily before people who want to come and take advantage of their hard work. We'll be back with more Rising after this. I just described how we open up those resources to be used. But I guess we're out of time. More rising after this.